Could you tell us about Black Dog, which you've had uh, the North American premiere of here at TCAF? It was uh, a commission from the 1480 Now Foundation, uh, together with the Imperial War Museum and the Lakes Festival in England. It was part of a series of artworks commemorating the First World War, but it, it was the one graphic novel project that they uh, commissioned. Um, so every year from 2014 to 2018, they commissioned 2025 20, artworks across every medium. And so I got a call out of the blue. Do you want to pitch as an idea? Something to do with the First World War. It needed to be a graphic novel, because that's what they wanted to do, but also maybe a, a, a performance component as well. And so immediately I thought um, uh, that, I mean, most of the stories that I'm interested in and that I've written so far have tended to be about individuals going through traumatic situations. My last film was about Luna, was about a, a woman who'd lost a child and they're recovering from that, going through the grieving process. Um, other, other stories I've written have been similar to that. It's just a, an area I'm really interested in a real-life person in a real-life situation, but the internal world that's going, uh, the, the, the various uh, connections and uh, images and ideas that, that are going on in their minds at the same time. So um, I thought I'd much rather deal with an individual rather than the scale of the war and the, the, the numbers, the big numbers and the height and the big tech and the tanks and all that kind of stuff. So I picked an individual who I thought would be a good subject a creative person, um, because even though a lot of people came back from the First World War didn't want to talk about it, if you're a writer or a poet or an artist in this case, it's in the work, can't escape it. Um, so I picked Paul Nash, who's I think the best of the of the uh, British war artists. Um, he wasn't the best artist, he wasn't the best painter, uh, he wasn't the most charismatic guy in his class at, at uh, Slade. Um, and he had a very easy walk in comparison to others, including his brother, who had a much tougher war than he did. But for some reason, he went into the war as a rather wishy-washy symbolist, but found this extraordinarily strong voice, an angry voice, an angry voice. Uh, in, and he's a landscape painter, which made it even more unusual. So there's very few pictures of soldiers. It's mostly dealing with what we humans do to the landscape in this situation, completely destroy, desiccate it. And out of that landscape, a sort of humanness comes out. So it's not about the specific soldiers' lives, it's about a bigger theme of destruction and uh, the, the appalling nature of war. So he was my subject. Um, there's been a lot written about him already. Uh, there's a great biography. Uh, by James King. He wrote an autobiography. There's lots of biographical work. So I thought rather than just do a straight biography, his paintings are dreamscapes really. So I thought I'd do a series of dreams. And he wrote about his own dreams in his autobiography. Um, so the book is a, a series of chapters. Each one is an individual dream that, that deals with actual events in his life, but seen, th seen through a lens of dream imagery and putting different moments together and trying to answer questions and see exactly what 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 he took out of the war, what, how he how it changed him, how it changed his work, how it changed him as a man, how it changed his beliefs, his political beliefs, and um, uh, and so that's 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 how the book evolved. And it's an absolutely wonderful book, and it was a wonderful performance uh, this Friday. Thank you very much for taking time to speak oh. with us.